A Bell 212 helicopter crashes in Iran, killing the country's president and eight others. Also, a couple of heroes fly west. This and other aviation news on Taking Off. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken and welcome to Taking Off. Thanks to our sponsors like ClemensInsurance.net. Jerry saved me a lot of money when I switched over to him. More about our sponsors at the end and in the links below. Okay, let's get to the aviation world, uh, including the fatal crash of the Bell 212 carrying Iran's president. But before that, let's talk about a couple of heroes that have flown west recently. On May 3rd, decorated war hero and pioneer Richard Dick Rutan passed away at 85 years old. Dick set the nonstop flight record in 1986 with his Rutan Model 76 Voyager, designed by his younger brother Bert, and the plane can be seen in the Smithsonian. He had flown 325 combat missions in Vietnam and was awarded the Silver Star among many other decorations. Rutan set many flight records but will be most known for the Voyager flight with Gina Yeager. The first round trip around the world without refueling non-stop flight, they took nine days and covered almost 25,000 miles. Dick died in a hospital in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho where he opted not to endure another night of oxygen for a lung infection. He went out on his own terms. Another hero, World War II Triple Ace, Clarence Bud Anderson, died peacefully in his sleep on May 17th at the age of 102. He was the last Triple Ace from World War II and the oldest living American Ace. Many people have shared their favorite Bud Anderson stories on the internet. And if you have one, please let us know in the comments. I really enjoy reading them. I never met Bud Anderson, who retired as a colonel, but was honorarily promoted a year and a half ago to Brigadier General. His P-51 Mustang he flew in combat was named Old Crow after his favorite drink. He had 16 kills against the Nazis. He also flew in Vietnam and didn't stop flying until in his 90s. So blue skies and tailwinds to both pilots. Turning now to the international news. Iran's president, Ibrahim Raisi, has died in a helicopter crash. While tensions and conflicts in the area are at an all-time high, it's looking like there's no apparent foul play on the crash. What we know is that on May 19th, Raisi and the country's foreign minister and seven others were found dead hours after their helicopter crashed in fog. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei quickly named the first vice president as the new president, insisting the government was in control. From the pictures I've seen during the search for the helicopter, there was a very thick, heavy fog. And reports were that there were three helicopters and the other two made it safely to the destination, but the one carrying Raisi did not. A search was started and after a few hours, the Bell 212 was found. Here's who's been confirmed aboard the helicopter, no survivors. Raisi, 63 years old, a hardliner, viewed as potentially the next supreme leader. The foreign minister, who was 60, also found was Malik Ramati, governor of East Azerbaijan province, the head of Raisi's guard team, the pilot, Colonel Syed Mostavi, co-pilot Mohsen Daryanush, and the flight technician, Major Barus Gadami. In total, nine people were aboard the helicopter, according to Al Jazeera. The Bell 212 was developed from the Huey, with a second engine being installed into the design, giving it a much greater carrying capacity. In addition to carrying VIPs, it's used around the world for law enforcement, fire departments, Coast Guard, and, and many others. The helicopter has variants that can take up to 15 people. Originally, the 212 was developed for Canadian forces in the late 60s. Then civilian variants marketed to all those different industries started in the early 70s. The two engines are usually Pratt & Whitney PT6s with a two-bladed rotor. The 412 later introduced is basically a four-bladed 212. The last 212 was delivered in 1998, and according to Reuters, Iran has 10 of these purchased back in the 70s during the Shah of Iran's days. The aircraft was probably 50 years old. With fog, reports of rain, and in mountainous terrain, the spatial disorientation becomes a huge factor just like the Kobe Bryant case. Al Jazeera is reporting that there was no communication from the pilot, and first responders were ham hampered by the weather at the site. 
For this helicopter, if operating IFR or instrument flight rules, which means you can't really see anything, Bell does require two pilots. And I would think the helicopter carrying the president that the two pilots were the best trained available. It's not known if Iran will carry out an investigation and if they do, whether they'll even share what they find. That's the major news. Now, the NTSB has released the final report and docket of the rotorway and gyro midair at AirVenture last summer, but I'm going to go over that one in a separate video. That one is really personal to me because I flew in that rotorway two days before the fatal crash with that pilot. So thanks for watching. Please support our sponsors like Flying Eyes. We're using our code taking off all caps one word. We'll get you 10% off. 67 Designs, the best camera, phone, and tablet mounts that are out there. 67D.com. Z Vision, the brightest landing and taxi lights that are out there. Marshall Protective Services, MPSProtects.com. And thanks again. Please like and subscribe. And remember that superior judgment trumps superior skills. Stay safe out there.